Okay, we're called meeting to order uh, the Pitt County Board of Education um, regular session Monday, August the 4th, 2014 at 6.30 in the third floor boardroom. Everyone is present. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance, Miss Owens. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have a moment of silence, and what we would like to do is to continue to remember all the families on vacation, uh, make sure that our children are safe, and that uh, our employees are uh, enjoying their summertime, and that they're safe, and everybody comes back and uh, begins a new year because we are at the uh, very close to opening our, our school year and we just hope that things go well with that and uh, with everyone who is involved in it so that we have a good start uh, this coming year. Let's have a moment of silence. Amen. Okay, uh, routine uh, business adjustment to the agenda. Agenda. I would like to make an adjustment to the agenda dealing with the extension of the superintendent's contract by one year. And we would add that at the bottom of the uh, routine business. And we're looking at... Uh, this contract is up in 2017. We're looking at adding one year, 2018. Second. Also, I would like to, uh, with the consideration of the personnel report for, two th for August 2014, have the consideration of the personnel report as discussed in closed session. Add that also. Second. Made the motion, Mark seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Public expression. All right. Don, are you representing yourself or a group? group. A group. Okay. You will get five minutes. You get five minutes. Okay, first we have Marjorie Pearson, and you have three minutes, and you come up to the podium. Come on up to the podium, Miss Marjorie. Come on down. We won't hear you. Okay. Okay. I don't want to say hi to everybody. Uh, you are. <laughs> I want to speak on behalf of Miss Clark, and Miss Clark, she is my friend. And I think she worked very hard, and she has a family and children. So I think that she deserved, you know, to be heard and whatnot. So I don't have too much to say because now I have retired, and so, but still she's my friend, and I can't leave her behind. Okay, so that's it. All right, Thank thanks. You. And uh, our attorney will... Let me know if there's anything that is said that should not be so that I can stop them. All right. Uh, Candace Whitley. Three minutes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Well, my concern is is Ms. Clark, but my concern is Mr. Lassner as well. Um, I think that's just been a bunch of misunderstanding that's been going that's been going on at Pat Tolis Elementary School. You have a staff that has lost their job because of numerous of things that are being said. And Mr. Lassner, he's a good principal, and I don't feel like that he should lose his job, and I don't feel like Miss Clark should have lost her job as well. Hold on just a minute. I would just say, I mean, I, the board policy would be that specifically if there's a public 
expression is about uh, matters of public concern, um, specific issues related to uh, specific personnel matters um, would be taken up through the grievance process uh, Correct. of the board. And, and certainly the, the chairman's call, but I would ask the, the chair may remind speakers that this is supposed to be about matters of public concern and not attacks or um, complaints about specific individuals that would be better addressed through the grievance process. What you would need to do is talk in generalities and not name specific names. Well, okay. Well, we're not naming any names. Um, I would just like to say that it's just a lot of things that go on that's not fair. Am I saying it clearly now? Ma'am, I can't. Stop me if this is the first time me ever coming up here and I've met. Mrs. Delilah, and I met Mr. Lassiter, and I met Miss Owen. I met all of, a lot of y'all, and I'm pretty much a fair person. And my issue is, is that some things are not good to say or talk about in the board meeting with a lot of other people being around. Some things are better talked about with the board meeting with the person that has the problem. Because some issues can't be solved just by talking to Mr. Who and So or Mrs. Who and So. Y'all are the ones who are in control. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to come and express their problems to maybe Mr. I can't say a name, but to a principal or to a staff. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And Sometimes you just have to, like I, if I had a problem today, I came to Mr. Ethan, he sat down, I said your name don't then. I came. I like you. <laughs> you messed up. What's up? What's up? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just a jolly person. Yeah. And I just don't, I try to be fair to anybody. And I talked to, I'm not going to say your name, I forgot That's all your right. name. Don't worry about but it. But I talked to him today too <laughs> concerning issues also. But some things is not being, it's not for the media to know. You know, some things are best be are resolved between you, you the board, all y'all people that sitting here, and the individual. And what I'm asking is, stop me Time's up. now. Time's up. Are you serious? Yes. Right. Three minutes. Thank you. I'll be the seat. All right, call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see, Karen Clark. Hi, my name is Karen Clark. Um, I'm up here to ask for a hearing. Um, I was terminated from my job, and um, I want someone to hear my can't guys. talk specifically okay. about that. Okay. Well, I'm... There's a process. For yeah, for okay. that. And uh, you would need to I don't either talk with one of, of us, and we would help you with that process, okay. or you can find it online and talk okay. to human resources. Well, when would you be available to talk to me? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don, again, you can't talk in specifics. Evening. Five minutes. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Don Cavallini. I'm the co-chair of the Pitt County Coalition Against Racism. And uh, I come with other concerned individuals, both employees of the Pitt County Schools as well as parents, uh, in particular of Pactolis School. Um, and I'm not going to mention names. I'm going to ask the question of the board. And I asked the question in a letter dated, I think it was June 23rd, okay, having gotten no response from not even one board member to that letter. I sent a copy of the letter to Dr. Lenker. Um, and the question is, why? Can Mr. Glenbuck, who is in charge of classified personnel, should not mention his say, name. well, okay, he's the director of classified personnel. And this is a quote in reference to the head custodian at Pactolis. As a classified employee of Pitt County Schools, she's not guaranteed a hearing before the hearing panel. 
and she certainly did not get one. If it's protocol for teachers to have such a hearing, why is it not for other instructional personnel and classified employees? And if this is in fact a personnel practice of Pitt County Schools, we hereby request that you, as individual members of the board and the board collectively, do something about that disparity, because we feel it's not just. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, spotlight on teaching and learning. Brock. Evening. Hey. You all look so relaxed. Welcome back. <laughs> I had a nice relaxing summer, I suppose. A um, couple things tonight. First of all, we've been heard a little bit about classified employees. We're going to recognize some classified employees tonight. Um, let's uh, bring up Mr. Matt Johnson, if we could. Sure. Matt's going to talk to you a little bit about the first ever custodial luncheon that was held for uh, Pitt County Schools and what came out of that. Uh, three schools were recognized and one of those stood out above the rest and Matt's going to put you in on that. Good evening. Good evening, Matt. Um, on uh, June 19th at CMEPS Middle School, we held the first annual um, custodial appreciation luncheon. Um, we invited every custodian in the county, asked them all to to show up. We had over 160 attend the, the banquet that we had for them. At this, we um, took our top three schools for cleanliness. Um, those top three schools were Lake Forest Elementary, Farmville Middle, and South Central High School. We didn't choose high school, middle school, elementary school. That's just actually how it all broke out, so that's the way we went. Um, we went through we went through the most um, improved school, which school had the most improvement during the year as far as cleanliness and, and getting to that process and getting to that point where we felt very comfortable with them. That was Belvoir Elementary. Um, we also recognized Travis Smith, who, I was, who was our custodian of the year last year. Um, we also recognized all the schools um, that did not have any injuries with their custodians throughout the school year. And it was a long list, so I don't have that all with me, but it was a long list of them, and, and congratulations to all them. We got vendors to give us several door prizes, so we handed out lots of door prizes. We handed out gift cards to the individuals that deserved it and all the door prizes, so it was a really good thing. What we did this past year is we brought in Facilico, along with the help of Mike Whitford and Doug Price, you guys can come on up, um, to help us. These guys are from facilities. They have been a major part um, in our custodial trainings, our custodial orders. Um, getting us the, the right products out there, getting us the right trainings, and giving just support to our custodial staff. And these guys have been a tremendous help to us to help us learn and understand what we got going on. And we learn from our custodians, these guys will attest to it, as much as we teach them. So it's a two-way street with that, and it's a, it's a really good thing. So we brought in Facilico to help us facilitate this inspection of, of all of our schools. We had a 30-point scale. Basically, each category was zero, uh, one to five, one being poor, five being the highest. And we went through this, this process. It took us um, almost three months to get it all complete throughout all of our schools. We tallied up all the, the scores that we had in there. We used these two gentlemen as our equalizers. Um, they went in and looked at the age of the school buildings um, and that sort of thing to bring the equal playing field. So you didn't have the brand new school, even though some of the brand new schools were the top uh, clean schools but we did have the equalizers in there to make sure we were given a fair count. So this year, our top school that scored the highest was Lake Forest Elementary. And we'd like to bring them up. I think they're all here tonight. Well, some of them are here tonight. Mr. Ackland's here, I believe. Is Mr. Ackland here? Come on up. How about Ms. Pitt? Is Ms. Pitt here? Come on up. Mr. Battle. Mr. Battle's here. Um, Ms. Staten is not with us tonight, and uh, Mr. Vines is uh, no longer uh, with Pitt County Schools. But this is the custodial staff, head custodian, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ackland, was the key role in getting this school to be the top performer in the county. So what we did was we created this trophy, which we can pass to each school annually. Um, and what we can do is we'll take this plate, make a smaller one, and we can put it on the sides of this so as it goes to each school, each school will have and it will be a history making trophy so it will tell you each school for each school year that we have this. So without further ado, I'd like to Mike and, and Doug to present the trophy to um, the Lake Forest team. 
Great yeah. job. Yeah. The Board of Education proudly uh, recognizes the Lake Forest Elementary custodial staff for creating excellence in the East. Presented on August 4th, 2014, we as a board really appreciate it a lot and thank you for your hard work. We also got a banner. Sorry about that. We also got a banner we'll use annually. So as we get this done, if you guys want to get behind this, we'll get a good picture. <laughs> Nice banner. Wow. Wow. I'll side and spread it out for you. More and more people if we can. The bag lift us in it. So they doing it for free? This is not cheap either. <laughs> 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 it's a night. That was still even working out. Exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Oh, I don't. It's all big that sticks out. That's <laughs> nice. That was nice. Kids are going to love seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> Parents should be, yeah. love it even more. Really cool. Parents, should, <laughs> Parents should love it even more. We also had an individual recently from our transportation department who was recognized uh, by the state. And I'm going to ask Mr. Joey Wellington to come up and talk to you a little bit about the award he, uh, Mr. Dustin That's Wells, received. And uh, fill you in on that. TV. We're a family here at the transportation department, so we've asked Dustin's family to come out. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We are so proud of Dustin. Oh, man. Uh, you just don't know. We have had a great summer at the bus garage. And uh, we are just so happy that uh, many of you maybe really don't realize these gentlemen that work at the bus garage that inspect the buses, referred to as the 30-day inspection, is etched in general statute. Listed as a superintendent is supposed to make sure that happens every 30 days, which he has designated to me, and it's a real tough challenge. And I turn it over to people like Dustin, and he goes out and he does inspections every 30 days. It's about a 42-point check. There's over 400 items in that check that will park the bus, meaning students shouldn't ride on it. And he has to <laughs> find those, repair them, and then there's hundreds of other things that need repairs. Well, each year, the North Carolina Pupil Transportation <coughs> Association has a conference, and they have a competition between inspectors. Dr. Linker graciously let our guys attend this year, and Dustin in the inspection contest, which is a written test, and you have to be in the top 12 in the written part to go to the next level, which is a hands-on inspection, and he uh, became top inspection tech of the year and the North Carolina Pupil Transportation Association is sponsoring his trip to the National All right. uh, America's Best Inspection oh. Contest in November. And I Tell would like to just read what <laughs> uh, Derek Graham sent to Dustin. On behalf of everyone here at DPI, I would like to sincerely congratulate you on your first place finish at the NCPTA Best School Bus Inspector Contest in June at the First Flight High School. I definitely appreciate the effort, extra effort it takes to prepare for and participate in this event. Not only did you finish first, but you are continually honing your skills needed in everyday tasks of inspecting school buses in North Carolina. In the end, the children who ride the safe buses you care for are the real winners. I appreciate the fact that you participate year after year, and I hope you will continue Encourage your coworkers locally and across the state to join in the fun. Good luck at NAPT, America's Best Competition in Kansas, 
as we will be all rooting for you to do the very best among the best across the USA. Yay. Good And the Pitt County Board of Education proudly recognizes Dustin Wells for creating excellence in the East. And we appreciate Thank all you. you do. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, I see that these folks keep you straight. That's why you appreciate that. Come on up. Everybody, come on up. He's going to get a big <laughs> Look at that little girl. She's right there. Just as one. You hear Put that on Facebook. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Um, I think the chair has one other uh, recognition, but I wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things I left at your seats. Uh, a couple of invitations for upcoming events. The first is uh, Wednesday, August 20th. It's a ribbon cutting ceremony for the e Steam Lab lab at Aiden Middle School. Uh, you might have seen in the media some of the coverage of what's been happening with the lab at ACOC and EPS, and we've got, it's my understanding, all the equipment getting in place at Aiden Middle, and we're going to have some of the industry partners and school reps there at Aiden Middle to take a look at the labs that day, and you all are happy. Or it'd be great if you all could show up as well and have lunch and take a look at. I mean, if you. I don't know how many of you, if any, have been in those labs, but they're awesome. I mean, they are, you know, I can only wish I had something like that when I was in middle school. I was telling somebody the other day, a STEM lab for me in middle school was like wood shop or something. But <laughs> these, they're completing all these modules. I mean, it's just great. Uh, the other thing is uh, the Education Network Luncheon. Uh, this is the first time we've done something like this. This is a collaboration between uh, the Green, Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce, the Parents for Public Schools, and the United Way. Uh, along with us, the school system, and what we're doing is we're bringing in business reps and um, teachers, about five or six teachers from each school that were recommended by the principal and uh, from various subject areas, grade levels, and the idea is to give the teachers a chance to collaborate with some of the business leaders in the community and uh, learn a little bit about what types of expectations those businesses have for students once they leave our school system. and. Uh, also, some of the ways that businesses might be able to help teachers out and provide them with some things that uh, could benefit them in the classroom. So uh, there will be more information coming on that. Uh, last thing, you might have seen, seen the little pins that are at your seats as well. That's for a celebration that's coming up in January, uh, the 175th anniversary for public schools in North Carolina. There's a big celebration planned in Rockingham County in January, and uh, you'll be hearing a little bit more about that as well. Uh, it's a little bit of a trip, but maybe you could make it to that also. Anybody in the general assembly is going to call? <laughs> <laughs> you call. Send me an email. <laughs> okay, I'd like to uh, present an award from the Association of School Business Officials International, and I'm going to read this to you. The Association of School Business Officials International is pleased to announce that the Pitt County Board of Education has received a Certificate of Excellence Award based on the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for the fiscal year ending 2013. As the only award program specifically designed for school district finance and reporting, the COE represents a significant achievement by the school district and finance department in meeting the highest standards of school finance reporting. To receive the, reward, the award, the district must satisfy specific guidelines for effective and high quality financial reporting recognizing uh, by school business officials. The school district uh, merits special recognition for receiving this prestigious award. Sincerely, 
Don Musso. And we know that we received this war award as a result of the hard work that hey. Michael <laughs> Cowan has done and the financial office with everyone. And we need to uh, recognize him for this recognition for us. Let's give him a hand. Pitt County Board of Education proud to recognize the Pitt County Schools Finance Department for creating excellence in the East, presented on August 4, 2014. Mm -hmm. And we really appreciate all that you do and all that your department does. Thank you. <laughs> a little caress. You like I to say a few words? I, I will, know you do. So I, will, you say I will accept this on behalf of the finance office because uh, it is definitely their award, not mine. I'm just uh, fortunate uh, that they put up with me and that we're able to work together um, to, to do this. Uh, it is their award, not, not Michael Cowan's, even though I'm, I'm here to present, I mean, to accept it on their behalf. Thank you. And they will be uh, thrilled that uh, the board has recognized them for the hard work it takes to, um, to uh, receive such an award. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, um, we've added an item, and we're, uh, it deals with the extension of the uh, superintendent's contract by one year. This contract's up in 2017, and we're going to extend it one year to 2018. Uh, do I have a motion? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you? His contract oh, sorry, is right, up in right, 2017. Right, we're adding one year, and that will cause his contract to be up in 2018. I apologize, Mr. Chair. Accepted. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we... Well, wait a minute. Her, she had her hand up. I was going to make the motion, but you can make the motion. You can make the motion. Either one. Jill? I move that we extend Dr. Lanker's contract to 2018 in recognition of the strong leadership that he has provided us with in the last year. Second. Um, Jill made a motion and Mark seconded. Any discussion? I'm very pleased to support this, Dr. Lanker. You've been doing a great job, and I would say it's very rare in such a short period of time to be awarded a contract extension, but I can say, I'll just speak for District 5, this has been a, a great year of growth, peace, and harmony, and I think that says a lot about your leadership. I'm very proud to support this contract extension. And I would also say that there have been so many innovative programs that have been implemented Absolutely. in a short time that he has been here in Pitt County. And uh, uh, as chairman, I am uh, just proud to have you as our superintendent and pleased with what you do for the students of Pitt County. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, we've got a, a motion that's been seconded. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? OK. Uh, do I have a motion to uh, approve the consent items? So moved. Second. Barbara made the motion, and this council seconded it. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, they've been approved. We have the EPS committee update. Uh, Mark and Cheryl. Sure. Good evening. Good evening, board members. Uh, I want to, I'm going to do an update on the committee meeting. Uh, there's a portion of it, though, that I'm going to ask Bill Frazier, who's been uh, in charge of the design for the early college. He's going to come and present the memorandum of agreement for board approval. So I'll let him go through that with you. Uh, the EPS board committee meeting was on July 21st. Uh, present at the meeting was Jill Kamnitz. Benji Forrest, Christine Waters, Mary Williams. Staff members were Dr. Linker, Michael Cowan, Bill Frazier, Delilah Jackson, and myself. Others were Caroline Daltrey. Uh, Mr. Forrest presided over the meeting. He made a motion to approve the June minutes. They were, uh, motion to approve was uh, seconded by Ms. Uh, Williams, first by Ms. Kamitz approved, and they, they approved the minutes. Now there's four, I'm gonna go through there's five major update pro program updates that I want to briefly touch on. The first one is out of student services. 
Um, we discussed um, information about the Bridges Program, which is the partnership between Pitt County Schools and Building Hope as an alternative to short-term suspension. Um, we're looking at offering that alternative to South Granville, CMF's E.B. Acock. It's for students who have been suspended less than 10 days. It would give a, a location, uh, hopefully at Building Hope, where they could still receive instruction in reading, math, and behavior intervention to help with reducing short-term suspensions. The second, coming from structured, excuse me, I'm getting a cold, coming from student services is the structured day program. Right now it's already up and running. It's a collaboration partnership with the juvenile justice system. It's operating right now at Building Hope. We do need to relocate it, so we're looking for some possible places for it to start. They need to run a longer day than Building Hope allows, it, allows them to do. We're looking at Belleville Boys and Girls Club, but nothing's been put in stone yet. Uh, so that's already going. It serves our level two and at-risk students that's been adjudicated. So that's structured day, so it's already happening. Uh, in the career and technical education area, uh, Brock mentioned a little bit about the STEM labs. They have already been installed. Teachers have been trained. They were trained. Uh, last week, from July 29th to the 31st. There's 22 modules. The modules were chosen in collaboration with us and then businesses that were choosing the modules based on the workforce that they wanted to create. So ASMO, VADA, NACO, lots of local industries looked at those modules, decided which ones fit their workforce, and so really we're looking at it as a workforce development already at the middle school. So they are, they've been trained, it's in and ready, so it's ready to roll out for the new school year. The fifth one that I'm going to discuss is Read to Achieve Summer Camp. I know you have heard a lot about it. It's now over. It ended July 31st. The principals, well actually it was the assistant principals that were the administrators for the summer programs. They have really bragged on how well it went. Uh, as of right now, based on, in other words, the students went to the camp they got to take, they had to take an end of the camp read to achieve test to see if they could pass the test. Uh, we had 54 students out of the summer camp students to pass. Uh, we're waiting now to see how many completed portfolios. Remember there was two alternatives, you could pass the test or you could complete a portfolio. So right now we have 54 that have passed the test and now we're waiting to get the numbers in on possible portfolio completions. So, you know, uh, out of 360, we still feel real good about the 54 because that would have been possible retainees had they not. So we feel good that the, in the camp, I'm actually looking at spreadsheets now that the schools are filling out on the different passages that they're passing in Summer Academy. And it's pretty impressive. Uh, so I'm very proud of them and I feel like it was a big success. The two training updates that I have <coughs> that we mentioned was the high school principals have decided to focus on literacy. And so we're going to be focusing on the vocabulary that goes along with the high school courses. That's what literacy looks like at the high school level. So we've got Max Thompson, who's going to be providing some training and then helping us to go in and look in classrooms and help build the literacy component in our high school. So that's underway. And also we had a successful trip to AVID this summer. We had 22 staff members to attend the Summer Institute. Uh, rave report, as always big plans when they come back, and they implement these plans. Right now, I don't have any specific data. We're looking at some of the data on how well they're progressing through the program. There have been some site coordinator changes. Um, we've had the tutors in place. Uh, Preston Bowers, who works now at the 912 um, assistant sort of innovative, what is he? High school, High school innovative coordinator. But anyway, he's following AVID. And he's also our district avid person. He's tracking that data. So he'll have some more for us on that. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over now for the approval and let Bill take you through the memorandum of agreement with Pitt Community. That's exciting. So I'll ask Bill to come down. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. What an exciting time for 912 education in Pitt County Schools. I believe Carol put in your packet the um, memorandum of agreement as well as a mission statement of our early college. Um, we're at a point now, we've been uh, meeting with Pitt Community College the past six months. We had a, our 
our last meeting last week was the one that things really came together and they said we're ready to move. The MOA looks great. Let's proceed. So we're at a point now uh, that we're scheduled for an opening in the fall of 2015 for our uh, Pitt County Schools uh, STEM Early College High School. So we're excited about that. But before we get into the MOA, I do want to say that uh, Pitt Community College has been outstanding. Now you have to realize that they're opening their campus for the first year to 75, 13, 14 year olds to invade their campus and have high school there. Um, and they've opened their arms to us and have been, been wonderful in the process. So I, I do thank them for their, for their work. The mission really summarizes what our early college um, is. This will be included on our application for the innovative high school to do October 1st. So we had to do a little abstract and I wrote this and um, you can take a look and it pretty much exemplifies or, or explains what our early college uh, will be. Uh, it targets students who are first generation, college bound, um, at risk for, for dropping out, um, and underrepresented in higher education. That's our target population. And we're starting with 75 ninth graders uh, in the fall of 2015. And it's a five-year program. Students will start in their freshman year and go five years. And at the end of their fifth year, they will have a high school diploma um, as well as an associate's degree and or course work uh, that will transfer to, uh, to a college. If you look at the last sentence of the mission, this is kind of what it's all about in terms of curriculum. Students will be provided a curriculum that will prepare them to solve future problems for the benefit of society, develop talent in STEM fields, and lead to industry credentialing. So I think we've got it all pretty much wrapped up in that, in that last sentence right there. A few other things before we get to the MOA. People asked about facility. You know, where, the issue is always where do you put an early college high school on a college campus? Um, Pitt Community has designated the Russell Building for us for the first year. Um, they're designating rooms that will be strictly for the high school courses. Um, we're bringing in two, the plan is to bring in two mobile units that will sit right beside the Russell Building that will house our um, principal's office, counselor's office, and our, and our teacher's office. That is in year one. The neat part about year two is they're opening their new science building at Pitt Community College. And they've got one entire wing set aside, designated for Pitt County Schools STEM Early College High School, which to me is really, really exciting. Um, so they've committed to the process as well as, as you have. Transportation is always a concern, trying to figure out how to get kids there. And uh, Dr. Linker has recommended that we, uh, kids, students will come to school like they normally do, and then we'll bus them from their high school to Pitt Community, and then they'll return before their buses leave to go home. That's probably the least expensive process and works in other counties. Um, lunch is always a fun topic. We have to serve these students lunch. Uh, and our coordinator for our lunch program has um, committed either uh, Ridgewood or South Central to, to make the lunches, deliver the lunches. Uh, Pitt Community is uh, petitioning off part of the GOES Center for our early college kids to have lunch. So we'll bring the lunch in, kids will come, and they'll have lunch in the GOES Center and then go back to their classes. Um, I do want to say that we're under contract with the new schools folks from Raleigh. Uh, we, we have uh, been with them for about, I guess about six weeks now officially, and uh, we have a design coach that will be coming in to work with us in terms of designing the curriculum what courses to take, and so forth, with a STEM, STEM focus. So now to the MOA. If you look at the last page of the MOA, two names are on there that I thought was rather ironic. Uh, Mr. Forbes and Mr. Charles Long were both principals at Farmville Central High School, and both were 912 directors in Pitt County Schools. And here we are now, two, two folks that are involved in this process. So I thought that was very ironic in the whole scheme of things. The MOA is, is um, what I would say is pretty standard. 
Um, we had lots to look at in terms of other MOAs from other districts. The new schools folks helped us design this and work through this. Um, page two talks, uh, discusses your responsibilities, our responsibilities. We will have a principal for the early college. Uh, and the plan is to begin searching this fall for that person. Um, enrollment, the 75 students will be, there'll be a committee. Uh, there'll be a rubric uh, qualifiers for students to, to qualify. And again, we're, at, we're starting with 75 students in year one. I hope you had a chance to look through the MOA uh, prior to the meeting. Are there, are there questions you have for me? In regards to the MOA, Ms. Council, Ms. Council, I just I had I'm one sorry. question uh, in terms of um, the 75 students. Could you uh, be a little more specific on how these students will be chosen to attend the 75? We're looking again. We're targeting students that are at risk for dropping out. Okay. Um, um, the can there'll be an application process okay. at the middle school <laughs> level. Mm -hmm. Um, and there will be a, a committee that will look at the applications. You know, somebody who is top scoring in their, in their grade level obviously would not score well in our, in our rubric. Um, we've not set the rubric up yet, but we have our target population. Uh, we'll go into all the middle schools uh, in January to start drumming up business for the early college. But they'll, again, there will be a committee um, that, will, that will look at that. But we have our, our target population. I think also in reading it that you will also look at folks who within a family that have never graduated from college. Exactly. Some of those students will be selected as first graduates from college. So That's a good point. In the letter of is there a letter of commitment or something that each student and their parents will sign? There will that? be, yes. Yes, they will. Um, once they uh, are approved through the application process, they will have a letter of commitment because it is a five-year commitment. Yes. And we want these kids that we're investing in year one to stay the full five years. Uh, so there will be a commitment letter. Yes, ma'am. I guess the uh, uh, yeah. yes. concern I have, have, and it's, I guess it's not a real deep concern, is the degrees of freedom, I would call it, you know, being on a high school, regular public school, there are, it's freedom, but, you know, you always got a principal somewhere close around. On a community college campus, not quite that degree. Have we looked at other counties who have uh, early college to see if there's something there we need to take a look at? We visited um, Beaufort Community College and Wayne Community College, and two very different programs. Uh, one in Beaufort is very controlled. Students wear um, the, like the Beaufort dress code indicators and so forth, and they're pretty sequestered from the main population. Uh, the one in Wayne, you know, one of the draws to, to, to this <coughs> is you're on a community college campus and there's a little bit of freedom there. Yeah. We see this, ours is kind of in between that. The fact that we're gonna be in the Russell Building uh, in classrooms which is right beside where our trailers will be, um, we feel like we'll have a good handle on where these students are going to be. It won't be a free roam of Pitt Community College. They're going to be, the buses will actually go right there to the Russell Building, drop them off, they'll go into their classrooms, uh, and they're going to be monitored, even, even through the lunch process. Okay. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the MOA. I have a question. You, you can, you'll have a time to ask <laughs> okay. that question. We're just making a motion. All right. Make a motion that we approve the memorandum of agreement between Pitt County Schools and Pitt Community College. Second. Mark second. made the motion, and Robert uh, seconded. And any discussion? Mary? My question would be, in upon reading this, Rules have changed with this in who is going to be selected to enter the early college. First generation, and we need to be specific in this, and I don't know how you develop the contract, but we need to be very specific in making sure 
that parents understand and don't make it so um, hard that they don't understand okay. that the opportunity is there for their child that it may be the first kid to ever have an opportunity to attend college, whether it's a four-year institution or whether it's a two-year. We got to be specific because Absolutely. community college is college. And four years, four years. So we must be specific in how we explain this to the parent. We 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 we, we got to be you know and, we're, and gonna, I want, we're gonna recruit. I mean, I, I, the, the and, counselors at the middle schools and, and should have a really good idea of the student we're looking for, um, and it will be our job to to meet with those students as well as those parents. Abs absolutely. Um, I want to be I want to be specific this, in that because this that's is exciting an, to meet an those opportunity kids. is an opportunity. Absolutely. And first time. Absolutely. Your first time out there. Your first time doing and you're the first one in your family to ever get that chance you don't want we don't want to, to put any roadblocks absolutely in 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 the in that child's way I'm or that family's about way this for these, these okay students. i absolutely. am too i'm it's I mean, time we, it's yeah. a long time coming yes. Jim. well in the event of something um a child isn't successful in the program or maybe has behavioral issues and not be able to adapt or whatever what what happens there? Do you can you fill the spot in and give another child an opportunity? Dr. Or? Lincoln, I'm not sure how that. My experience has been the kids. A lot of kids go back to tr traditional schools. Sure. You know that just happens. Mm -hmm. um, they find out you know, it's just not quite what they needed or right. doesn't quite meet their needs exactly. Generally, though, because of the taking the college classes after, unless they transfer from another early college outside of the county, they <clears> don't transfer in anywhere other than first. Possibly second year. Mm -hmm. Okay. But after the first or second year, you're not getting it's transfers just a, in third or fourth. It's first, just an open space year. at that point. I got you. Mm -hmm. okay. Most places would be like everybody else. You know, they're graduating maybe 90 to 100 percent, but you may start with 75 sure. and only graduate, you know, 65. Okay. Another 10 may have gone back, going back to the traditional school. Some even graduate early. Just, okay. You know, so. But and, and that's another Man. thing, Dr. Link. Will it will it be same discipline guidelines applying to those students for Pitt County Schools? Generally, a little bit tougher because they always have to deal with the Pitt Community College guidelines. Okay. They're going to be dealing with both. Yeah. Still, still our sense. students. Still still are, they still belong to That's us. Right. Okay. All right. Benji. Yeah, I got a question. Uh, Bill, will they have the same opportunities for athletics and extracurricular activities that they would have had at their regular schools? And if they will not. They'll know that up front. They'll all be, be part, part of it. They'll all be explained. Right. Okay. They'll, they'll forfeit all that. I, and, and I think that's important because they've got to make a decision and decide if a academics and, 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 and going the college route is the way they want to go and maintain or if traditional. And I, and I like that. I think also we're going to add some clubs. Yes. Good. Yeah, Good. we'll do some support that way. Uh, our AVID uh, director, uh, Preston Bowers, we're toying with the idea of, of bringing some AVID support into the early college high school um, tutorials and so forth uh, we want to provide them every opportunity to be successful you know Perfect. not not succeeding is not going an to option work. it's going do you, do, do, you an have, option. do you have a comment okay i would just like to say you know as i can remember when i was 912 director we were talking about early college and this has been seven to eight years in the making and now here we are at the forefront of finally having this and we really need to thank dr massey yes. and uh dr linker for working together and working together collaboratively and before uh at pcc our biggest problem was space yep. so therefore dr massey has really probably acted in a way that he is allowing this to take place and giving up some space that he could have for us to have this school. And our education Mary. program services. Correct. We need to we need to acknowledge um, Dr. Umstead over there and their and our leadership team. And all that they do Thank in you very much. behind the scenes. Yes. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, uh, we have a motion and it's been seconded. Uh, we had discussion. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, motion passed.
Thank you. Thank very you. Much. It's awesome. Okay, financial update. Benji and Michael. Mr. Chairman, we haven't had a, a meeting as such since uh, since our last board meeting, but Michael has got some tremendous updates. It looks like us at this time. <laughs> he always does. Uh, look, uh, at, your, uh, at your seat there is a um, document that attempts to summarize <clears throat> one whirlwind of a state budget uh, session. Last week, the joint conference came to an agreement with concerns to the, um, the state budget, and that was voted on at the end of, of last week. Since that time frame, information has been dispersed from the state level, providing an, an overview of the specifics within, uh, within the budget, but there has not been uh, a lot of specific data that pinpoints what the exact uh, allotment formulas were going to be for Pitt County Schools and thereby allotments to Pitt County Schools. So I've got a document here where I tend to summarize what the impact will be, but just know this is uh, a projected impact. The exact data has not been handed down from the Department of Public Instruction. This is just in, in my poking around and trying to, uh, and to reconcile the, uh, the state budget to see, determine what the impact will be on our operations for, uh, for next school year. Included within your packet is a one document that is a summary of the budget. The second handout is the overall teacher salary schedule where I've taken an attempt to, to reconcile a teacher's 2013-14 salary to their 14-15 uh, salary and calculate the projected or the, the, the salary increase on that accordingly. And then the final copy here is just a, a summary of each of the different versions of the budget from the governor's version, the Senate, to the House, and to the overall conference that was actually approved by the House and the Senate last week. So that's a little bit of the upfront uh, data before I step into the summary that was the first handout. And pretty much what I'm going to do here is, is very quickly kind of uh, uh, pinpoint two areas of, of, of focus. It's teachers and teacher assistants. Those are the areas that from an education standpoint in addition to Medicaid and the state budget, had a, a lot of conversation with concerns to increases for teacher salaries and battling that against allocations for teacher assistance. And hopefully we'll provide some guidance on where the final state budget went with both issues. First of all, teacher salaries. It does include an average increase of 7% for teachers in next year's salary schedule. Teacher longevity is now built into the salary schedule. Uh, teachers will no longer receive an individual longevity check on an annual basis that's actually been built into the monthly uh, salary schedule that the teacher receives. The uh, step increases have been eliminated from, uh, from the, the teacher salary schedule, so thereby meaning there's been like four, I mean, six or seven different categories of salary of salaries. You have everywhere from a $33,000 salary for teachers between zero and four years of service, $36,500 salary for teachers between five and nine years of service, $40,000 salary for teachers between 10 and 14, all the way up to $50,000. There is no language covering <coughs> tenure and there are no requirements to complete a 25% uh, procedure within the budget. And finally, master's and advanced degree supplements are not reinstated within this budget. If you're already a teacher and are currently pursuing uh, those advanced degrees, you will still have access to the supplements. But if you are a student that is a teacher that has not yet began uh, pursuit of an advanced degree, you will not be eligible for those supplements. Number two, non-certified salaries, a $500 increase. Uh, per, um, per employee, non-certified employee for Pitt County Schools as well as all other uh, state employees uh, of uh, school systems. Number three, adjustment to the teacher assistant allotment. The teacher assistant allotment has been reduced by $105 million statewide. The, the, the dynamics of that include two components, a recurring reduction of $129.9 million as well as a non-recurring increase of approximately $24.8 million for a net reduction of $105 million statewide. Now again, the $24.8 million is a non-recurring increase, so thereby the legislatures would have to act on that next year or that would also be another budget reduction that will be, have to be overcome in next year's budget, uh, budget season. 
Now, approximately $42 million of the teacher assistant reduction are dollars that have actually been transferred over to the teacher allotment category. And we're going to go through that a little bit more in detail in number four when I get to that. Now, in the last bullet point on the first page here, I'll say that the, the state budget has been advertised as maintaining funding for teacher assistance in grades second and third. However, the state allotment for teacher assistance is being reduced by approximately $105 million. This reduction is being funded by a reduction in the amount the state is funding per student in grades K through 3. For example, in 2013-14, the state funded teacher assistance at approximately $939.79 per student. The budget reduction will most likely be funded by reducing that $939 amount. What we do not have are the actual, the actual allotment formula from DPI to tell us what the funding will be per student in grades K through 3 for teacher assistance. But in the end, it's clear that the budget has been reduced by $105 million in funding for teacher assistance. So how does that impact Pitt County Schools? If we turn over to the second uh, page of this handout, what I've attempted to do is to project that impact on our operations. And this is basically the, the formula that I use, the math behind it. But when it's all said and done, we are looking at approximately a $463,000 reduction in teacher assistant allocations, which equates to approximately 14.77 uh, positions, teacher assistant positions, funded positions. Now, a couple of uh, notes to make here. Checking with Human Resources this afternoon, we currently have well more than 24 uh, vacant teacher assistant positions. So if uh, after further analysis of this budget that uh, it ends up being that we really are talking about 14.7 teacher assistant positions, that should not impact actual people. That's point number one. Second, uh, further analysis will be done of the budget to um, to make sure that we look under every rock, every stone, to make sure we can save as many as those 14.7 positions at the schools as possible. Uh, the focus of this board has always been to protect the classroom, and uh, we will uh, continue to do that over the next uh, several couple of weeks to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect the funding for those 14.7 positions within our overall operations. That will be looked at closely. But right now, it's looking like 14, a reduction of 14.7 position, funding for 14.7 positions. The third point on this is that where do we go from here? As we, we've talked about in the budgets uh, in the past, once we get past the, um, the hump of starting the new school year, our focus starts to begin to look at the 15-16 school year and part, part start to plan for that. Clearly, there's been a push in the legislature this year to take a look, a hard look at teacher assistance. As we have just discussed, there's over $20 million of our non-reoccurring funds included within the budget that would have a further impact. And in next year's long session, I'm sure that teacher assistance will have, be a, a, a strong um, uh, uh, argument made on both sides of the issue of teacher assistance. Uh, I really am concerned of where the state is going in the early uh, grade levels, considering the emphasis that's been put on the state for uh, read to achieve, read 3D, and making sure that our students are on grade level. I think we've all been clear about that, uh, and the importance of the teacher assistance play in, uh, in our classrooms. Uh, again, we've done everything we can for the most part to protect our, our teacher assistance, but I will say this issue is not going to go away. We are going to be dealing with, uh, the, uh, with um, reductions or potential reductions to teacher assistance uh, in next year's budget based off of the, 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 the dialogue that's been had thus far in our legislature. So we will, uh, we, again, we will look to make sure that we can uh, minimize the impact on our teacher assistant positions, but as of right now, the analysis shows a reduction in funding of approximately 14.7 positions. Item number four, which is at the bottom of the second page, was the adjustment to the teacher allotment formula. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated in the arguments that the legislature tried to, uh, to make with concerns to the allotment formula. First of all, I'll start off with a very high look at what, what I'm talking about here. The kindergarten allotment is now allotted at one teacher per every 18 students. Last year, it was one teacher <coughs> per every 19 students. The allotment formula was also changed for first grade teachers, where the allotment formula is now one teacher for every 17 students. 
Last year, it was one teacher to every 18 students in first grade. This change to the state allotment formula for teachers had the impact of increasing the number of state allotted teacher positions by 761 teachers statewide and approximately 17.4 teachers for Pitt County Schools. On the surface, that sounds awesome. The next page kind of tells the rest of the story. However, the increase in state allotted positions is being funded by a reduction in teacher assistant allotments. Of that 105 million net reduction in teacher assistance, they've transferred $42 million over to the teacher allotment category. And this is based off of, uh, I've also learned over the last uh, couple of months, more so than in the first 10 years, what the legislature gives you, they can take away very quickly. Because five years ago, when school systems were faced with several hundred million dollars worth of reductions to uh, education, of which a, a nice chunk of that came in the form of teacher position allotments, the state gave school systems flexibility to make transfers amongst allotment categories. And over that time frame, a lot of uh, school systems, including Pitt County Schools and every single school system in the state, um, used a portion of their teacher assistant all allocations to cover teacher positions because our first and foremost priority as a school system is, and it fits with other school systems is to protect teacher positions. So over the past five years, te uh, school systems have been able to use teacher assistant allotments to fund teacher positions and offset state budget reductions in teacher funding. The state budget reduces the statewide teacher assistant allotment and increases the statewide teacher position allotment by the amount of dollars transferred collectively by school systems last school year. The legislature's argument is that dollars have already been transferred from TAs to teachers and the schools are already using TA dollars to fund teacher positions. In fact, Pitt County Schools last year used teacher assistant dollars and over the last several years to fund approximately 12.9 positions. So when it's all said and done, how it all shakes out, yes, we got an increase in, of 12.4 teacher positions, but we were already using the teacher assistant dollars to fund those teacher positions. Mm -hmm. So the net impact is basically zero. I mean, it's like half a, half a position, but we are not getting the true benefit of that change, as well as with all other school systems are not getting, that decided to do this, are not uh, getting the full benefit as well. We're fortunate that this is a break even. I do feel that the way that school systems um, uh, make those transfers, it might not be a break even for some school systems. They might find themselves in the hole with concerns to the number of teacher positions that were funded last year as compared to the number funded this year. No, Let me ask you a question. Here. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. And, and, and this goes right back to the fact that they don't realize that when they do this, it affects really literally two positions. Our bus drivers, because our teacher's assistants That's right. take on a dual position. That's that's right up there with uh, with number the one of the number one uh, impacts in reducing our teacher assistant um, allocations. Another goes directly back to that classroom service, that the teacher assistants are integral in allowing uh, teachers to be able to differentiate instruction. They are the prime uh, person who's able to provide those assessments, those assessments, allow teachers to be able to differentiate instruction. And third, I must say, what's also disappointing about this is that the legislature specifically gave school systems the ability to make transfers in prior year budgets in order to help manage budget reductions. And in this budget, it feels to a certain degree that that's being used against school systems it because is. of how the decisions that they made Absolutely. in order to manage the reductions in state funding for education. Yep. So now, where do we stand with other budget reductions? And number five, uh, we have a couple more allotment categories that saw reduction, central office admin 45.9, and at-risk student funding 152,500. Uh, 152, I will say about student at-risk student funding, uh, alternative programs use at-risk funding in order to uh, fund their operations. We fund uh, SROs out of uh, those operations. So I, as of tomorrow morning, I'll start looking at uh, the impact in that area. And finally, 
Just to summarize some other areas that might have an impact on our, our, our financial operations, and number six, 840000 was allocated in the budget to expand the school voucher program. I want to make sure I, I noted that. State funding for driver's education will be eliminated effective July 1st, 2015. That will no longer run through school systems. And that is, um, that is an area that kind of felt that was coming, but now that is, uh, that's come to a reality. So um, I hate to say that's going to be a, uh, it appears on the surface to be a tax increase in, uh, passed on to all, all citizens because now parents will have to start paying uh, out of pocket, more so than what they're currently paying now. There are no additional fixes to the Read to Achieve program. And the date for the AF grades to be issued for schools has been moved to January 15, 2015, instead of August 1, 2014. Now, again, what I've tried to do is hit this at a very high level and try to, uh, to narrow it down to the operations of Pitt County Schools. I contacted DPI just today, and by law, DPI is required to have allocations out to school systems within 10 days of the budget being approved at the state level. So um, we have somewhere within the next uh, you know, eight to nine business days, we should be have specifics from uh, the state. That really puts us in a crunch because uh, we will have to, I, I'm going to go back and take a harder look at this to, to kind of get uh, the impact for, for Pitt County Schools and narrow it down to our allotment formulas working with Delilah and Glenn. But, uh, you know, student, our students are getting ready to return, teachers are getting ready to return, so we need to, if, if there's impacts to our operations, we need to get it out pretty quick. But this is just since Friday what we've been able to determine as far as the potential impact on our operations for next year. And as we always, as more information becomes available uh, from the state and Department of Public Instruction level, I will make sure that we get it out and keep you guys abreast of uh, what impacts it will have on our operations. Mark. Um, Michael, one of the issues, and there's several that I've looked at with this, in the next five years, the state is projected to be an additional $800 million short in their funding, and that's by their own numbers that they've crunched in terms of the tax cuts that they've enacted. Oh, yes. yes. Which will make next year's budget tremendously problematic. It's like they want to drive a car, but there's no gas in the car to drive it for next year's budget that they'll have to create. The next issue that's particularly bothersome to me in this is the loss of longevity for teachers in terms of saying that they're going to give a 7% raise. First of all, it's an average 7% raise, and the teachers are essentially paying for it in terms of loss of their longevity. And if you look at the, sal the salary schedules that have been put out, the projected salary schedules, particularly troublesome to me is looking at year uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14. The raise projected percentage goes from 6.19 to 3.27 to 1.96 to 9.5 to 7.3. What type of formula was used, and I know you're the messenger, yeah. um, so I'm, I'm opining essentially on this, but what type of system was used to create this raise formula in terms of who gets, who doesn't, you're essentially well, creating two classes of citizens in terms of who's going to get, who's not going to get, and then you're taking their, rep, their, their longevity pay, which was intended to keep teachers in the profession in terms of rewarding them for their longevity in terms of service to the state. The next issue, you know, when you look at longevity, do principals continue to receive longevity, psychologists, counselors, assistant principals? And then you're pitting people against yeah. individuals. Let me try to touch on each of those three issues. Uh, and then I have one quickly. extra thing that I okay. wanted to point out for the budget when I was reading it, but please go ahead with that. First issue is that you know, you're right. The, the, the state government's uh, revenue projections have, are potentially actual much less than what was projected. So um, the, the change in, the, in the, the, the tax reform last year might not be coming to fruition as quickly as it had been originally estimated. And if that continues down the road, it will have an impact on all facets uh, of government. Uh, with concerns to the, the teacher salary schedule, if you look, that same trend that you spoke of occurs in every single category. Right. The $40,000 category salary is the 43.5. It goes 
at a much higher rate at the beginning of that to a much lower rate at the end of that, that section. The, the $40,000 salary is the $43,500, $46,500. That has to do with the fact that um, teachers, it's all about timing and where you are currently placed on that salary schedule because that salary is a fixed for a five-year period. So that person that is sitting at 12 years that's only going to get a 3.27% increase in two years will have their salary increase up to 43500 Now, I'm not arguing for it. I'm just saying that's it's a timing issue of when you would receive the full benefit of that, of that salary increase. It's hard to swallow when you look at the varying percentages. And third, with uh, concerns to longevity, all other uh, employee classes are uh, scheduled to continue to receive longevity, but it makes you wonder how long that will be before uh, uh, efforts are made to uh, build longevity payments into a salary schedule that will then water down the, the impact that you receive from that. Two, the, second, the second issues that I want to bring up is it also demands that local boards of education create merit-based pay for teachers, but doesn't fund that as well That's right. in terms of local dollars that counties have to pour out. But then it takes it a step further, and I'm glad Mr. Johnson's here because I certainly hope he'll take this back to the commissioners. It takes Pitt County ad valorem tax dollars and stipulates that that must support a statewide charter school and a virtual charter school that doesn't exist in terms of no brick and mortar, no facility, Kids can stay at home and take classes, but yet Pitt County tax dollars, Edgecombe County, Wilson County can go to support a kid sitting in Alamance County to take an online class. And that to me is particularly troublesome when we can't find money to find um, raises for teachers. Well, it sets the trend that was created throughout the budget uh, season. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were very uh, clear about our position on this is that, you know, by no means do we support and do not agree with the fact that any reductions in state funding should be shifted down to the county commissioners. And every effort will be made in order to try to attempt to do that, whether it's with a virtual school or whether it's workers' comp, tort claims, whatever the issue might be. Michael, and I, what I would like to say is at the very beginning, this budget could have been much worse than what we have here. Oh, yes, it can always much be. worse. Yes, and what we were looking at at the very beginning. That's uh, right. We were talking about increasing class size. We were talking about the 25 percent. Mm -hmm. We were talking about uh, the um, um, teachers losing their tenure, whereas mm -hmm. now they are getting a raise. Oh yes, the, teachers are getting teachers a pay raise, that's a, that's and other possible. employees are getting a pay raise. So. Uh, I know there are a lot of negatives, yeah. but there are some positives yeah. for example, in the budget. For we could have also had a much harder hit with our teacher assistance yes, as it was in the Senate. That's right, because at one point in time, I was very fearful that we were, we were going to lose, lose them all, lose them all, all in second and third, yes. second and third grade. Okay. And that is the voice of concern to moving forward. Moving forward. That's right. right. Christine. Uh, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm real old school. When they introduced longevity as a separate payment, it was not part of your retirement. Mm -hmm. And now that it's built in, that was the biggest argument about against the longevity payments. Yeah. And now that it's built into the salary, well, isn't that... It's also going to cost That's, us in matching funds, but the teachers get a long-term benefit out of that after they get out of the profession. Their retirement's going to be built on that salary, salary. which includes right. that longevity. Right, and no now question. that longevity is built into yeah. it, I mean, that's a chunk of money that people like me never got retirement on. So, you know, I, and I'm not saying that's a wonderful thing, because I think a lot of this stinks, but... But that's, that's one thing to be said. Benji. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I asked a question or two more for uh, clarity because I've had some teachers ask me, so I thought we'd get it on the record. Uh, I know we're losing masters, but it, it looks like the master's degree is going to be grandfathered for those that yes. already have it and those that have started. started. That's right. Okay. Yes. Now, now, question that was asked me today. Does that 
that that ten percent already figured in, or or like for example, is somebody's on this year oh, nine. No, this is a, this is just the regular that's teacher salary. Regular teacher okay. salary. Okay. that's a completely different salary. So that would be ten percent on top of that. That's a completely different salary schedule. Hadn't even got to that point yet. Okay. Yes. All right. And yeah. as far as the uh, national board certification, at this at this point in time, until I see a salary schedule. Uh huh. But the law and I are taking their word that it's still there. Okay. But we were. But, but you haven't heard anything no. official on that. Oh, what we've heard official is that yeah. if you've already re receiving it, you'll continue. If you're already in pursuit of your degree, you will receive it once you earn that degree. Okay. Yes. I did, we pursuing. just need to clear that because yeah. I have several calls on that, Mr. Chair. Any. Um, I do, I do sort of piggybacking on what Mark just said. I think we all, and what you just said, there's a little sigh of relief because it's not as bad as it could have been this year. But we're kidding ourselves if we think we've dodged a bullet because the bullet is still heading at us next year. Mm -hmm. And it could be, I mean, they just flat out aren't going to have the money. So it's, it's an election year. But <laughs> the word election, yes, there is one in November. <laughs> And man, is that going to be important for the future of education in the state of North Carolina? Any other questions regarding that? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank Thanks, Michael. Good job. Good job. Human Resources Committee Report. Dr. Jackson. Good evening. I'm not sure there's anything left to say <laughs> at this point. Um, well, I can say that the Human Resources Committee met on July 22nd, and we discussed several things with Mr. Cowan with the budget update. At that point in time, I think we had around 25 or 30 vacancies. As of right now, at 751, unless I get an email when I sit back down, we have about 10 vacancies. Um, it's in various areas, various grade levels, but we have, I appreciate the fact that y'all were able to agree upon a signing bonus, which I think has really helped in our um, process of hiring our science, our math, and EC. When one comes in, another one comes in and said, I'm leaving, but we're trying, we're beating the pavement to hire. While Michael is still figuring out the rest of the budget, we're filling up those vacancies as quick as possible. And we are trying to help the principals find viable candidates. So that's where we are with the vacancies. Also in our meeting, we talked about not being able to update policy 7.111, which is the evaluation of certified personnel because of course the tenure, there was nothing mentioned about tenure. It is still in litigation. So we as Pitt County Schools issued one year contracts to all of our people that were coming up for this year. So we didn't have to worry about, we never got to the point of the 25% in issuing, offering four year. So everyone is taken care of this coming into Pitt County Schools for this year and that were reappointed for last year. So that was something that we didn't have to worry about at that point in time. There was one issue that relates to finance um, in regards to our retirees. Those of you that were in our Human Resources Committee meeting, uh, we talked about changing the process of how we pay retirees as far as coming in and doing extra work for us such as remediation or teachers that are doing work outside of their regular paycheck. Uh, we did a trial this summer with Read to Achieve. All of those that worked this summer that were teachers were paid $25. We did not have a problem filling any spots to employ people to help our kids get through the Read to Achieve camp this summer. So in an effort to help maximize the money because all of our budgets have been reduced such as Title I, such as remediation, bringing our retirees back at $25 an hour to work with remediation with our students was something that we talked about and we we're talking about it with our administrators as well because it allows us to get for them to have more time because our budgets are short now for our local teachers that are paid out of Title I we're going to have to factor in their new salary schedule which means the money is dwindling and dwindling as we have to fit into this new process so that is something that we're going to be further discussing with our administrators this week um, about the 20 up to $25 so let me explain that as well if I'm a beginning teacher then my amount would not be $25 an hour if I decide to do an after-school program but if I'm a veteran teacher that has been working for several years the most that I would see would receive would be $25 so that is something that we're working with to try to help our administrators maximize the budgets that they have because they are dwindling as you can see because in a lot of our title one budgets we have to pay for them 
for those teachers out of that money for the salary increases that they will receive. So those are the major things that we talked about. Of course, we talked about the budget and teacher assistance. I am thankful to Mr. Cowan for um, getting hitting the pavement hard today. I mean, really, really hard, crunching numbers and trying to make it work because we were very scared it was going to be 115 teacher assistants that we were going to have to tell they had no job. So we are working very um, tirelessly trying to make sure that we're maintaining as many jobs as possible within that process. Also, there was mention about the master's program. We didn't talk about that in our meeting, but I do want to um, give a little bit more information about that as well. Basically, anyone that had started the process is grandfathered in if they had taken one class by, I think, August 1, 2013. So as that scale is developed and people graduate out of it, they will be able to receive the pay and supplement on that particular scale. But as he stated, that has not been released at this point in time. So that is basically our quick update. Mr. Cowan did join us for our meeting, so a lot of the part was with the financial piece as well. So are there any questions? I would just like to say on the personnel yes. report. Yes, sir. Could you add a column that uh, puts, uh, would name the school where these people are resigning from or transferring from? Okay. I think there should have been one there. It might be. I'm looking, but. Usually there is. Yes. So the I would know which school they're resigning from. I'm talking about the people who are resigning. Oh, okay. transfer. you're talking about the resignations. Yeah, the okay. resignations. So I can okay. see the schools or where. Because yes. mm -hmm. I think presently what we do is resignation and the reason why they resign. That's their, just the reason, but not the school. No, it, it, it says assignment. Yeah, it's, a, it's right here past the. That's the new employee. It when says you go resignation. Over, when you go over to the person who has oh. resigned. Oh. You know, you don't know where they resigned from. Yeah, it's right there. What page are you on? What page are you on? I'm on page I'm on three. Five. You're I'm on page, page five. Three. I'm on page five, but page that five. doesn't it doesn't tell you who replaced them. I'm not worried. Well, yeah, it does. It's just it's got the person who. Okay, on page three, what it does when you look at the person was at this is new employees. The new employees, it does. Yes. Names. But the, when you go over to the person who has resigned, it doesn't say where they resigned from. Oh, okay, let me explain that. Okay, All what right. they're saying is, is that the person, the first person you see on the list, uh -huh. the name of the school that they were leaving was A.G. Cox. And the reason why that person is the new employee is because that particular <laughs> person on the far right resigned. And or it's from that school. It's from that particular school. All right, got Does it. Does that make sense? I got it. Okay. So it's the same school and it's showing the two and the from. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? I, I noticed uh, how Barbara. many. Thank you. I noticed how many people are moving to another school system in North Carolina. I <laughs> just did a quick count and it was way past numbers. Yes. Um, we are now in the steel game, I guess you can say, and borrow because mm -hmm. we're switching all the districts in Region One. We were talking last week at our training. That they're saying, oh, you got my teacher. And I say, yes, you're getting ready to get, we're just switching back and forth in a lot of the districts. And also people may be district shopping. You know, they're trying to go other places for various reasons. Some are leaving because they have better offers. Some are leaving because they're following a family member, a husband, or wife. So we have a lot of different reasons. So we'll get that report and try to give some more information on that as well. For Texas. Mm -hmm. Texas, yeah. Texas. <laughs> but yet we have, if you go to uh, a certain school and look on the license plate, we have people who are teaching that still have Texas on their license plate. <laughs> so we have some people from Texas also. Yes, we do. Thank y'all very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Operations. Good evening again. Um, we did meet on July 23rd. We did not have a quorum that night. Um, but. I wanted to come up here tonight and give everybody an update on where we're at with our mobile units um, that we're bringing into D.H. Conley and to Lake Forest. I'll start with D.H. Conley. We have removed the three mobile units from the front of D.H. Conley. Um, we moved those to the parking lot temporarily. We have transported those three units over to Lake Forest where they are now sitting out behind the school waiting to be put together. Um, today we got the, the pad done. We have to put down a six inch sand pad for them to come in, stack the blocks on, bring the units in. So we got that done today. We expect to see units arriving tomorrow um, for the DH Conley. We did, we were able to purchase the nine unit 
um, used units out of uh, Wake County, which was a tremendous cost savings to us as uh, Pitt County Schools. So that was a good thing. I'll get to all the cost in a minute. Um, Greenville Utilities is scheduled to be out there this week to move the transformer over, get it out of our way. That way we can be ready to set up the next round of electricity going to the new unit. We do have all of the stuff ready there for the power supply, so we are ready to go with power there. Um, our water, gas, sewer is already there on site, so we're ready to go with that as well. So as these units start rolling in tomorrow, we'll start getting them stacked into place. We should start seeing decking go together next week um, on this unit at DH Conley. Once the decking is on, then we're at the mad rush to get inside, get our fire alarm, our security, our lighting, all that stuff done and ready to go for the school year. Um, we are on track there with that, so it is a good thing. If Mother Nature will ease up on me just a little bit, we'll have a fighting chance. Um, at Lake Forest, like I said, I do have the, the three sets over there already. Um, the three mobile units that we are uh, moving from Ridgewood to Lake Forest, we have the tongues on them. They will be broken apart tomorrow and start being transported over there this week. We are going to set the three units in place tomorrow that are already on site. Again, Greenville Utility is ready to start and complete the underground electrical work this week. Um, all of our underground plumbing is done, so we're ready to get those things in there. Monday, the decking starts out at Lake Forest. Get that out, the decking and ramps, and then we'll pour a, a concrete slab up to the door there. So, again, we are on track to have these things ready to go for school to start if the weather will let me get it done. <laughs> um, we are going to work tirelessly to get this done and have these things open for school. That is our goal. Um, we even sent a crew last week to Wake County to the actual units we bought. Um, Wake County was unable to commit to us so they could have the, the deckings down, the plumbing, the electrical, all that disconnected from the trailer so they could be moved down here. So we sent a crew of seven to Wake County last Tuesday, broke the decking down, unhooked all the plumbing, electrical, water lines from those, which allowed Vanguard to get those trailers and get them start moving. They are sitting at their um, yard in... Uh, in, pick, in Wake County right now ready to be transported so they have started taking them off of the site there at the school site where they were in Wake County um, we should start seeing the first units here tomorrow so where are we at cost wise total cost to date we are at three hundred and sixty three thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars our projected cost we should come in just under three hundred and eighty thousand dollars if you remember our original projection to bring these mobile units to get them at these two sites was $850,000. So being able to get these um, used units has, has given us a tremendous cost savings through us going out and doing some value engineering, if you will, getting the right contractors in place and doing this, we are able to bring the cost of this down where we're gonna save, you know, 470, uh, potentially save $470,000 putting these things in place. So that's where we are. Pray for good weather so we can get these things wrapped up and get the kids in there. Come, uh, August 25th. All right, any questions? I, I don't have a question, but um, this board at one point in time voted that we would not purchase mobile units again. And so I would like the reasoning behind this to make, be made public. I know we've talked about it, and I'm sure we've said so. But I, I do think there's a concentrated effort because I've had a lot of comments from folks that say to me, I can't believe you all are going down that path again and the amount of money that was being spent. So if we could just have some public acknowledge, acknowledgement of all this, I think that would be a great pathway. Um, the reasoning behind not, us... Not to me, but just somehow other that Brock can incorporate. Okay, something. I'm sorry, I was going to... And mean, I would also you know, say that you need you know. to mention in your conversations that an alternative would be redistricting. <laughs> and they do not want to hear that word. And by us putting these mobile units in place, that's preventing us from having that's to do exactly right. redistricting. But still, they need to know them. Yeah, person. that's what I'm saying. That needs well, to be a part of it. Well, this, board, this board did make that decision to support. Support, my, my yes. yes. We not voted all, on that not all to all support. Us did. Not all of us did. Not all of us did. Go ahead. But, no, Mr. Chairman. It passed. Yeah. Mary. Yeah, it did pass, mm -hmm. but not all of us agreed. Mary. Because not because not only are we looking at the additional trailers, but we're also looking at the additional students that are in overflow at Lake Forest. Mm -hmm. That that that's that's the concern right there. There is a lot 
I'm not saying that Miss Ford is Miss Ford is an excellent principal. She has an excellent staff, excellent um, teachers over there. But the students keep coming, and 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 we have to look at that also, and and we want to be mindful of 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 the task that's at hand over there. Miss Ford so just commented that she's 120 students over over. And that's a lot. That's and a lot. We, and, and we need to, and if if we need to look at redistricting, then maybe we need to take a look at that. And maybe we just maybe we just need to do that. The hard stuff sometimes. But adding trailers after we had, you know, agreed not to buy anymore, built that new school over there, and then to put that counter, I'm not going there. But anyway. Okay, right you got right. anything else to add? Any other questions? Okay, thank you. All right, Com comments by the superintendent. First, I'd like to thank the board for the opportunity to work in Pitt County Schools. It's a great place to work and a great place to live. Um, one of those plum jobs, I would describe it as uh, you know, just a great place, great place to be. Uh, you've got a leadership team. I have to start all over now. Okay. Um, Three minutes. Uh, it's over. <laughs> Go the, ahead. Um, uh, the senior leadership teams you heard from tonight does just an, an incredible job. Uh, throw Brock in there as well. The five of them uh, are making things happen in Pitt County Schools. I have the privilege of going to them, and, and Cheryl, I think, hates seeing me coming down the hallway. Um, you know, I said, you know, we could do this STEM, the STEM thing. Next thing I know, it was happening. You know, the early college, why can't we have one of those? I said something to Dr. Massey. Next thing I know, uh, Mr. Frazier's got it all ready to go, and we're approving it and going forward. You know, Read to Achieve is, was handled without a hitch. Uh, you know, Dr. Jackson's got Teach for America filling up our teaching positions this year. You know, you can't ask her, you know, you know, Michael in the finance office is obviously does an amazing job. And of course, you just heard from, um, you know, from Mr. Johnson about, you know, organizing and keeping our budget straight um, and looking at the big picture for Pitt County Schools. And, you know, we're, we're not talking about next year. You know, these mobile units are conversations about next year. We're not talking about next year. The conversations we're having, well, where are we going to be five years from now? Okay, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at, at maps of where the county is growing, what we're going to have to do over the next several years to make this work in the big picture. So I'm just saying that we've just got a great, I've got a great team to work with, and I appreciate the opportunity from this board to continue working. Thank you. Sean. And, and that's exactly why it was a real pleasure to extend your contract right there, Dr. Laker and, and everybody else. Um, I would like to again congratulate the class of 2014. It's been a little bit since we had graduation, but Dr. Lanker, I look forward uh, to the ideas that you have already discussed about improving graduation for next year. Uh, look forward to that a lot. Good luck, everybody, in, in this upcoming school year. Appreciate everybody's enthusiasm. Uh, look forward to the faculty coming back and our students, and just look forward to an outstanding 2014-2015 school year. Thank you, Mr. James. Thanks. Ms. Mildred. I'd just like to thank all the board members who did lobby this year to the General Assembly, and I think it helped a little bit, and uh, we need to keep it up. Also, uh, I gave each of you uh, some information on Triple P, Parents Stand Positive. I had a chance to attend that meeting last week, and uh, so it's some really good information that can help us, I think. Uh, also, um, we had an opportunity to see um, North Carolina A&T State University was in the county last week, and they did two days of STEM with kids countywide, and they had a nice group of kids, I think about 25 or 30, that attended it at the 4-H office, and it was well received, and so we was real proud to see that happen. And also, um, had a great summer. We spent a lot of hard work this summer, <laughs> but some great things has happened for our youth in Pitt County. Uh, we had 13 youth from Pitt County Schools to attend the NCANT AFL program, and four was from D.H. Conley, four was from Rose, three from North Pitt, and two from South Central. All schools got the information, and um, those were the ones that uh, attended. And also, we recruited 41 kids total, and I'd like to thank Ms. Mary Williams for assisting with that. And that's pretty much it. All right, thank you. 
Benji. Mr. Chairman, it was an honor to uh, for me to lift my hand in support of a uh, year extension to our superintendent. I think he's done a tremendous job in leadership. One of the things that I've been very impressed with is that he, he foremost, one of the things that he prioritizes is giving kids opportunities. And uh, we have definitely seen an increase in opportunities for our young people here in Pitt County. And so I'm very pleased of that. Also, uh, I am pleased that finally teachers are getting some compensation, additional compensation for the hard work and dedication that they have. Still is not enough, and we need to make sure that we continue to keep them and everybody that's associated with the schools as a priority for our North Carolina General Assembly moving forward, and hopefully, too, Tom, and I'm glad you're here in our audience as well. We're going to continue to need the support of the county commissioners as we move forward because as dollars uh, digress in Raleigh, we're going to need to look at other resources such as some, some additional help from the county commissioners. Okay, Robert. Let me say thank you to Pitt County Schools. Almost everywhere I go, I see enthusiasm, even, even at times when it seems like teachers were at their lowest point as far as not being able to get monies. Uh, we still had enthusiasm, which I think is, is real good. Uh, Sampson County lost a, a, a good thing, and I think uh, Pitt County has that. And uh, since I've been here, and I want to thank everybody for this, my first full year in a couple of months, uh, I see Pitt County as, as, as on the move. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of new things have happened since I have, I have been here, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Ms. Barber. Well, Ethan, the honeymoon continues. Thank you. <laughs> and when I was coming back yesterday from the beach, I passed Shakad School, and out on the marquee it said, you'll soon be here. So hopefully that's a good sign. It is. Mark? I'd just like to say uh, congratulations to our teachers for contributing to a successful school year for Pitt County Schools. Our teachers are a hard-working lot in this district, as well as our administrators, our custodial staffs, our cafeteria workers, all of the people that, that make the school system a great district to be in. Uh, so thank you to them for the hard work that I know will be done this year to further contribute, contribute to a great Pitt County Schools. I'd also like to say congratulations on retirement to a very dear friend, a former teacher of mine from the eighth grade. Uh, that contributed a whole lot uh, to Pitt County Schools, and that is to Mr. Dennis Teal. Uh, Mr. Teal, at every school that he was at, uh, contributed greatly to student success. And I think one of his hallmarks will be, and ought to be, is that he helped the underprivileged children in terms of working in schools where there was high poverty, low achievement. Mr. Teal, and I will always refer to him as Mr. Teal, uh, brought about a lot of success and teachers loved working for him with him as a family and uh, so my hat is off to him and I wish him the absolute best in his retirement. Christine. All right. um, <clears throat> it is with some regret, and I hope I get through this, to tell all of you that this is my last board meeting. I will be closing on a house in Winston-Salem on the 18th of August. I'm not sure when I'm going to be moving, but I am taking on other responsibilities, and I've enjoyed working with all of you very much. And I will miss Pitt County. It's been 28 very good years, and I thank you for everything you've done for the school system and everything you will do. Thank you. Jennifer? I'll pass. This <laughs> 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 is an emotional day anyway. I know, right? Oh, boy. I'd like to welcome everybody back. Glad to see everybody back safe. Um, I'd like to welcome back all the... Um, ooh, Chris, you got Timmy, girl. Um, <laughs> throw them off. Um, Oh, my parents and my, my students are back safe. 
that um, my administrators are back safe from the summer holidays. Um, got a chance to attend the um, public school forums that was held this summer. Um, it was a very um, learned experience. Um, the um, information that was given is very helpful and it'll be useful. The primer is really, really good. Still learning a lot of good information from that. Um, I appreciate the ones that did it go to keep lobbying through the General Assembly to try to get better pay for our teachers and administrators throughout. Um, um, work with our father sent our kids to camp um, all summer long, um, job placement, working with kids and CTEs and things of that nature. Um, I'd like to thank the um, Pitt County Association of um, Historically Black College and Educators. They held their um, back to um, school picnic over the weekend and um, were able to um, do some recruitment and to um, get some of those kids first time going off to college to get them better prepared and to, you know, as to what to expect. And they had it real, rain or shine, they do it every year. And i um, very pleased about that. Um, also, um, I'll say. I'm in the red zone. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, uh, this yes. my gosh. <laughs> Jim. Jim. <laughs> Chris, I'm gonna miss you. Thank I'm gonna you. miss you, Chris. That's a good ending statement. Dr. Link, I'm glad for your contract. Y'all know me. Jill. <laughs> You're in the red. You're in the red, Jill. <laughs> Chris, I have to say, as the fellow board member and as your fellow district three representative. Uh, I've so enjoyed working with you and your voice on this board has been so strong and particularly with your background as a teacher, you've brought an awful lot to all of us and I thank you. Yeah. Glad the teachers got a raise, but I'm also glad that everybody else got a raise too. That I mean, you know, we talk about teachers all the time, but you know, to make sure that everybody got a raise, that was good. I think that's good news for the whole county. Thank you. Uh, is anyone here for parents for public schools? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Come on in, um, yes. Uh, didn't you receive a grant? You receive a grant, and I think that you need to be recognized for that. Uh, that you did receive that grant, and it was uh, that was a tremendous accomplishment, and you to be commended on that. And we appreciate that in working with us. Um, also, I would just like to say that we, uh, Dr. Linker, we're very happy to extend your contract. As board chair, I'm very pleased in what you're doing and all the programs that you're implementing in the schools because you're reaching those students that haven't been reached before. Yep. Go. And those students are being reached, and we appreciate that. And I am happy for the teachers that got a pay raise. Uh, whatever they receive, they got something, and uh, I'm just hoping that... Uh, the morale will be much better than it has been in the past, and we have a good school year. And with that, you had a comment. This, uh, this Friday is Tech Fest, put on uh, by Tim DeGreasy. Mm -hmm. you, you also see the cup in front of you. Uh, Tim has gone out to uh, make sure everyone gets one of these and all the participants get one. And thanks to Sheets, you get free refills for a year. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. So but anyway, for Friday, if you want to stop by and see some of the technology in action, it's a great program. Um, you'll see some neat things going on. I think there's 130, 115 different technology sessions. And over 500 that, teachers. And 500 plus teachers have signed up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thing. Do I have a motion to move we adjourn? Um, move we adjourn. Second. Uh, Sean made a motion. Benji made the uh, second. Uh, second. And any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.